Here's a good question for you. What is your minimum bending radius? Now, I don't mean like this. I mean like this. We're bending wires all the time, but we have to be careful not to bend them too tight. This is what we mean by the bending radius. It's the curvature of the cable or wire as you bend it. If you bend wires too tight, you can cause some damage to the copper inside, but most probably what we're worried about is causing damage to the insulation on the outside. Here's a close-up of a tight bend, and besides the damage on the right-hand side, what I want you to look at is the wrinkling up of the insulation on the left-hand side. This illustration shows the potential damage you can do to the insulation by bending too tight. You can cause compression or wrinkling like we saw on the inside, and you can cause tension or actually tearing and ripping and weakening of the insulation on the outside bend. Here's just an example inside of a disconnect, and you can see some radiuses are pretty open, but there are some that are really tight, and that's what I'm worried about, is that those are bent too tight and could cause damage to the insulation. What I'm really worried about is this, the wiring underneath the array, the wiring up of all the excess wire from the module interconnect wires and the optimizer wires. These are the kinds of tight bends that people make all the time, and they shouldn't. The exact requirement for the minimum radius for wires depends on the type of wire, and that information really comes from either the National Electrical Code or the manufacturer itself. We put up a bunch of text here, but it's really good to read it through just to get a sense of what we're talking about. The National Electrical Code says for USC type wire, which is often used under the array, the bend radius should not be less than five times the conductor diameter. Five times. So typical 10 gauge USC wire has a diameter about a quarter of an inch. So the radius should be five times that, or one and a quarter inches minimum. And that means that the diameter of any bend should be at least two and a half inches or more. And the code in a different section goes on to say that general non-shielded conductors, the radius should be not less than eight times the diameter. Different manufacturers might have different specifications for their wires. I just found one on the internet, but it's pretty typical of what you might find. For single or multiple conductor cables with no metallic shielding around them, the minimum bending radius they recommend is eight times the overall cable diameter. So finishing up, let's look at some bad and some good examples. Remember this example? I'm pretty sure some of these bends are too tight. And here's more of that same kind of typical bundling activity where the wires are swept back and forth on each other. Just got to pull those radiuses out so that those bends are more open. Here's a nice final example of what I'm talking about with nice open radiuses for those wires, nice big sweeping bends, calculated out based on manufacturer recommendations, but if those radiuses are bigger than two and a half inches and so on, I think you're in good shape. Hey, thanks for watching the training video using Interplay's simulation-based training program. You can keep watching our solar videos by clicking on the link to your left, or stay up to date on our latest solar snacks by subscribing on your right. To learn more about how the STP provides critical team training and helps you build an onboarding program at your company, please go to interplaylearning.com.